Good morning everyone. I hope you're all doing really well and welcome back to another weekly vlog. Just noticed the oven is open there. Um, I have just made some um, baked oats for breakfast. I haven't done that in so long and I've really got, I know this is like awful to have a craving like first thing in the morning but like I just love cake so much and I was thinking about cake and those baked oats kind of have like a similar texture to cake so i thought there's my uh, cake alternative for breakfast but it's boiling so i'm just letting that cool down um but i hope you guys are all really well and thank you so much for joining me for today's vlog so i've just got out of the shower and we've been back from holiday for um we got back on wednesday last week and it's tuesday so just under a week and on holiday I was washing my hair every night because we'd been in the sea in the chlorine and I'd wash it every night and just put it in a wet slick back bun but since we've been back I haven't washed it like it's been a week and I haven't washed my hair so I just had the nicest shower I used um that Christoph Robin deep cleansing paste which is just oh my god amazing I'll show you the tub when we go upstairs but it's got like it's a paste and it's got salt crystals and oh my god if you like when your hair feels like squeaky clean i love that feeling then you've got to try it so good i got the exfoliating gloves out did a full body exfoliate you know when you have one of those showers and you do everything um, and then i just put on the tan Lux gradual the tanning um, moisturizer on holiday it was absolutely boiling and i didn't sit actually like directly in the sun much at all i like to sit in the shade so actually i didn't i had a bit of a tan but like i wasn't i don't think anyone would look at me and be like you've been on holiday um so i've been um using fake tan anyway so i've just topped that up as well and now i'm going to have my breakfast and also um I've got the slow cooker out for dinner tonight. Um, let me grab the book. I lose what page I'm on, but this is the book I love so much. It's um, his name's Nathan Anthony. I'm sure you probably already follow him on Instagram, um, but he's got two books, um, both board of lunch. One's the slow cooker book, and the other one is the air fryer book. And oh my god, I've just ordered an air fryer this morning. I know I'm about three years late to the air fryer game, but I've done it. Um, I got the dual ninja one is that what it's called ninja like the two drawer one which i'm so excited about argos actually had it um on quite a good deal so i've got to go and pick that up later which i'm so excited about anyway i've gone on a tangent where was i going oh yeah i've got the slow cooker out because i'm doing a slow cooker dinner tonight i mean this uk weather is not giving summer vibes the slow cooker doesn't give summer vibes. It's a very autumn-y thing. Autumn, winter, I feel like the slow cooker. Um, but actually, it's not too autumn-y what I'm making. I'm making this, we've had this before and it's so delicious. Um, sweet potato, chickpea and spinach curry. It's a really nice veggie curry. And when I was making dinner last night, I cut up all of the sweet potato and onion just so I didn't have to do that this morning. So that's all ready, but I'm just going to prep the rest of it. Um, I have my baked oats and then get ready. Um, also, as I said, I've had my hair up. We were on holiday for a week. Every day I wore my hair in a bun. Since we've been back, I've worn my hair in a bun. So I literally haven't worn my hair down in over two weeks. And I feel like I'm gonna blow dry my hair, which I haven't done in so long. And I just feel like I'm gonna feel like a new person. So I've already done the sweet potato and onion that I just need to put in the rest. screenshot of this um i'll leave it like here so you can see it all we don't actually serve it with um rice we just have it on its own and it's so nice 
Okay, my baked oats are looking, they're looking a bit sad. I put raspberry in there and I think I put too much milk in. So I think it's like a bit stodgy. I'm sure it will taste nice. I'm actually just gonna put a bit of Greek yogurt on this and some honey and then have this and then tidy up the kitchen. Okay, looks can be deceiving because I've just literally polished off that entire pot of that. That was really delicious. I will leave um, the recipe that I followed down below and then I just topped it, as you saw, with some Greek yogurt and honey and that was so delicious. It tasted like a dessert, um, but actually it was, it was pretty healthy. get ready now my hair has been air drying so i'm just going to blow dry that pop some makeup on and over on my instagram i put up a question box for you to ask me anything basically because sometimes i feel that i share lots of outfits or what i'm wearing or what i'm doing but sometimes i feel like i don't share much of me and that's not because i'm holding back i just feel like i don't know does anyone actually care? Um, but I thought, you know, it'd actually be really nice just to answer some of the questions that um, you guys have. Um, so I put a question box over on my Instagram a couple of days ago to ask me anything as personal as you want. And there's definitely some personal ones in there. And I'm not going to hold back. I'm going to I'm going to give you the full lowdown. Um, so I'm going to get ready and then we'll get on to that. Uh, this is the shampoo that I was talking about, Christoph Robin. I've always called it Christoph Robin, but I heard someone call it Christoph Robin. So I don't know if that's how you say it. It's the cleansing purifying scrub. Oh, and it's gritty and it's delicious and it just makes your hair, like your scalp and hair just feel so clean. So loving that. For my base at the moment, I'm really enjoying mixing these two together. Um, this is the Charlotte Tilbury Beautiful Skin Foundation, and this is in shade 4, which is quite light. Um, so then I just add a couple of these super, um, super gloss drops from Tan Lux, and it just warms it up, adds a little bit more uh, luminosity to it. So I find that if you've got a foundation that in the summer is a bit light and you don't want to buy a new foundation, get some bronzing drops or something and just um, mix it in. I also haven't really worn makeup since I've been back, so I feel like it feels very weird to be doing like full hair and makeup today. I've just realised like how much easier life is to wear no makeup and throw your hair up in a bun. It's so much quicker. As you know, I am part of the Sky Cinema Club where each month I have been recommending and sharing some great Sky Cinema films to watch. And this month they have got a new film out called Breaking Point. It's available now and we've watched it over the weekend. And I feel like the film really takes me back to like my youth watching those dance films like Honey, Step Up, that kind of thing and I've been watching a lot of really tense thriller programs and films recently and it's you know when you just feel like so tense inside and you can't breathe well breaking point wasn't like that it was actually such a nice relief to just sit and watch something and enjoy it rather than feel like so stressed watching it so i think it'd be a really nice family film to watch as well so basically the storyline is about two teenage boys who are so talented at break dancing and they call it breaking they are both scouted to compete in the world breaking championships um, and it shows them going along their journey and kind of the ups and downs of that so there's loads of crazy break dancing and they are spinning on their heads they are doing all sorts 
and I'm just sat there watching how are you not hurting yourself doing this but they're amazing amazing dancers um, but also it's not just the dancing it's really good music in it as well um, it's there's depth to it and there's storylines and you kind of see family going through um, I don't know, I find this really hard actually for like not to spoil anything. Um, but family going through struggles with teenagers, I guess. So that is a really good watch. That's a breaking point available now on Sky Cinema. As I said, I think if you've got teenage children or um, you just want like a nice, light, easy watch, then pop that one on your list. Also, one that I am so excited to come out on Sky Cinema is called Babylon. It comes out on the 21st of July. I have watched the trailer um, and oh, it's my favorite era of films. It's based in Los Angeles, 1920s. It's like glitz and glamour. From the trailer, it looks like it's kind of Gatsby-esque. It's got Brad Pitt, Margot Robbie, and yes, it's kind of that vibe, that era. As always, they've always got such a great selection of films on there. So if you're looking for something to do then head over to sky cinema and i will leave the trailers to the films that i mentioned below if you have your eyebrows laminated or tinted or kind of any treatment on them and you find they get quite dry i find not straight away but like about a week after i've had them laminated the skin underneath is like very dry and almost quite flaky um well the elizabeth arden eight hour cream this is just amazing at absolutely everything um i've been putting that like rubbing that through my brows and then just brushing them through with a spoolie at night and honestly they're not flaky at all now like they're so much better um and i just feel like it's really like moisturizing that area like really intensely Right, finishing touches, I'm just putting my jewellery on. These earrings I am so obsessed with still. I showed you these in my pack with me. Um, but they are the Bottega dupes from Amazon for, I think they're £15. They look really heavy, but they're not at all. They're super lightweight. I'm always really paranoid about getting, like, droopy earlobes. Um, but these are lightweight, so you won't get those with that. I'm going to use the Bobbi Brown Crushed Oil Gloss. I love these so much. They're so moisturising. This is in shade Free Spirit. I'm still in my pyjamas, but clean pyjamas. That's, like, my favourite thing to do is, like, have the shower, do all your moisturising, and then put clean pyjamas on. I wish all of my hair had this wave to it. I regret um, below trying it straight today. It's weird that I haven't like styled my hair properly in so long. Right, so grab a cup of tea, get a coffee, glass of wine if you're in the evening or anything. Get comfy and then let's get on with these questions. I've made myself a coffee. Um, I feel like it's a bit cold today to have an iced coffee, so I've actually made a hot coffee. recently bought the brown sugar syrup from Amazon for my iced coffees to make um, a similar one to the Starbucks one. And it's so good that this morning I've put it in my hot coffee. This is the first time I've put it in hot one, so let's give it a taste test. That is good. I think I've put a touch, a bit too much syrup in there, that's quite sweet but I love sweet things. My camera battery has died, so that's fun. I've put it on charge, and then I'm going to get everything ready um, whilst that's on charge, and then we can do the questions, because I want to do the questions on the camera because it's much better quality um, than my phone. Okay, so as I said, I'm heading into London for a work lunch, and I've got no idea what I want to wear today. Literally none. Um, my brain's feeling a bit dead, to be honest. And this is what I had in mind, but I just don't think it's working. So I've got this green linen um, waistcoat from Zara, and I've got these M&S trousers, which are like my favorite trousers ever. Like boxy, which is fine. I like an oversized boxy fit. However, I just feel like it doesn't really do anything for my body. It's just literally like straight down. I feel like to wear the waistcoat with trousers like this, it needs to, like be fitted or a bit more cropped i just feel like it's just not working sadly thinking potentially this little white top with this can't get it out this cardi over the top right top and cardigan is on i think this is working better i feel like i could wear um a black belt and then pop some black sandals on and i feel like I feel like this could work. 
I've changed my mind. I'm actually thinking a blazer. I haven't worn a blazer in ages, actually. Um, I think this looks really nice. I really love the pop of sage green. This is really old from H&M, actually. H&M really do do the best blazers. Okay, this is what we're going to go with today. Um, I've added some tan accessories. This belt, um, I think I've shown you this before. I've had this for a while now. It's from Loewe. It's so handy because I really feel like you have two belts in one. So if you're going to buy a designer belt, I'd highly, highly recommend getting a reversible one. Um, basically, this little thing just pops off and you can put it on the other way because then you're just getting more use out of it and then i've got my um these are the like hermes dupe june sandals that i got in the asos sale that are so comfortable i think they look so premium and lovely and these are like 35 pounds and then i'm also gonna take this little pollen bag back in business with the camera i've just hairsprayed my hair it's gone a bit wild um but i've just put the shirt back on to chat to you i thought the blaze was very formal to have this casual chat okay i've got the question so let's get straight into it i've got all your questions here there's a real mix um such a mix um I don't even know where to begin because I haven't planned these. I was just going to like pick them out. We start. Um, okay, one, just one really quick and easy one. Hi, Laura. I hope you had a nice holiday. Why didn't you go on an all-inclusive holiday? Um, we just wanted to try something new. I absolutely do love a good all-inclusive holiday because it's so chill. And I find that that's where I do really relax and switch off where you just... Um, do they call it like fly and flop? You just kind of chill in the resort and everything's there. You don't have to think about much and you really can just switch off. You're not thinking about where are we going for dinner tonight? What are we doing today? Everything's there. I do love those holidays, but we just wanted to try something different, which was so nice, but I just found it not as relaxing. Um, okay, that's actually, there's two questions right next to each other that both say like, what are your goals for the next five years? Okay, so actually I'm going to come back to that one because I feel like some of the other questions are going to answer that. Have they given you a day for your surgery? No, not yet. So I live in Hertfordshire. My hair, it's just gone massive and wild. Um, I live in Hertfordshire and my family live in Buckinghamshire and, when, and I grew up in Bucks as well. Um, and there, they do it differently. You get a date for your surgery and then you have your pre-op. But for some reason they do it differently here. You have your pre-op um, to like make sure you're, I guess, fit and healthy to be on the waiting list. So that if a date comes up, you can like go straight in. So I've had my pre-op, but I don't have a date yet. Um, I will let you guys know as soon as I know. It's making me feel a bit like anxious waiting for the date, like I just wanna know the date. I really hope that they can give me, like I hope I have a couple of weeks notice. Um, okay, another one. Do you read books? Would love to know what you're reading. I actually don't read books. I really want to, and I took a book on holiday, but did I pick it up once? No. Um, I just don't. It's. I'm, I'm, I was going to use the excuse of I just don't have time, but I could absolutely make the time. I could not watch telly and read a book instead. I read one line and I'm like, what did I just read? Like, it doesn't go in to my brain enough. I feel like I have to read every sentence twice. Um, is your current home your forever home? Uh, no, I'm going to say no, it's not. Um, it's gone so quickly since we've been here. We moved here in September 2019. So in September will be four years and it's absolutely crazy how quickly that time has just flown by. We absolutely love it here. I feel like, I feel so grateful to this house for um, like times kind of during COVID to have our lovely house that was like a little safe space. Really, yeah, it like really does mean a lot to me, this house. We, we talk about this quite a lot actually. I think in the next couple of years we will probably move on and then that will be our house I would imagine for like the next then like 10 plus years. Um, we live in a residential area here at the moment which is so nice and we're so lucky we've got the loveliest neighbours, we've made like good friends with both of them, the road's very quiet, 
love it um however i think for our next house i would really like to look out to fields i would like to be a bit more rural i would like to i'd like to be able to like see a house in the distance but i don't want a house like right next to me saying that i'm scared of my own shadow and i think i'd actually be terrified to live more rural but um that is that would be the dream um with lots of doggies running around um but i don't know we will see let's get into some of the more gritty questions do you plan to have any kids and if so how many okay yes we do want children just for a little quick background tom is 34 i'm 32 I've got severe endometriosis, so I'm very aware of that, and that is very much on my mind. We do want children, and to be honest, I love my life as it is, and but I do want children. But it's just one of those things where I just feel like I'm not ready, but do you ever feel ready? I know I'm not old, but I just know that, like, especially with my fertility it could be a problem i'm actually the operation that i just mentioned is to um have the uh, lining of the endometriosis cut away so that a reproductive system is in the best condition possible to conceive a baby so feel a lot of pressure from the doctors to do it maybe before i want to the thing is is i feel like i'm always gonna I can't ever imagine feeling like, yes, I'm 100% ready because actually I don't think anyone is. So I do think it will happen. Well, like I, I hope it's gonna happen um, over the next few years. I'm very scared actually. It terrifies me um, because I love my life as it is. And this is such, it's gonna be, it's like the biggest change ever. So basically I've rambled on a bit there, but the summary is yes, we do want children, but I'm scared like times a hundred and I love my work I love what I do I love having my independence and I'm just basically shit scared that I'm gonna lose all of that I know I won't but it's just the biggest change ever and also I'm already super hormonal and I'm just <laughs> like what am I what would I be like being pregnant but then on the other hand, I know now, like, what a miracle it is to actually, like, conceive a healthy baby. So, I, I really don't know, like, what the future holds for Tom and I with, like, conceiving children. We both really want them. It's so terrifying. But, um, it's one of those things, like, you think, yes, in the future. But the future's kind of now. Like, I feel like... Anyway, I feel like I've spoken enough about that. But next question. Is being an influencer a lucrative career and do you want to stay doing what you do? Um... It is, yes, it is. Um, hang on, there was another question about how did I get into it. So let me, um, yeah, a new follower here. What's your background before getting into being an influencer? So let me kind of like answer these together. So very quick background is, as I said, I'm 32. I finished school at 16. This was when like you could just leave after your GCSEs. I'd been working in a hair salon for like after school and on Saturdays since I was like. 15 and i used to get paid three pounds an hour at this time my mum worked for paul mitchell the luxury hair care brand and she but she worked in the office in the accounts team but sometimes at school holidays and stuff i'd go to work with her and i would see these amazing shows that they would put on these really creative hair shows and the talent of these hairdressers and i was so in awe of all of this and just thought it was such an exciting industry and i thought okay i want to do that so I thought if I get my apprenticeship in hairdressing then I can go off and um, kind of do different things with that skill because my dad actually trained as a mechanic so it was always put into me from a young age that you need like a trade or you need a skill or something. I don't really come from like an education educational background like none of my family went to university and um, everyone's just like worked really hard. Um, and like we don't cut like my family isn't from money or anything so um yeah it was just like go and get a job earn your money and i was very keen to do that because also i've loved being independent my whole life i wanted to earn my own money and um i was desperate at 17 to pass my driving test i wanted to earn as much money as i could for my driving lessons 
Um, so I left school, started working in the hairdressers. At 16 years old, I was working 40 hours a week um, for a while. And basically then I got really bad contact dermatitis on my hands. Um, I was allergic to the so many products in the hair salon. I went to see a dermatologist and he said, if you don't leave that salon, you are literally going to like blow up. My hands were just, oh my God, I was covered in rashes and um, dermatitis and my skin was just awful and it was painful and it was horrible. But I love being in the salon um, and luckily I got on really well with the owner and so she let me stay on as um, like a part-time receptionist whilst I kind of figured out what I wanted to do because at this point I'd left school and like the first thing that I wanted to do was just like, no, you can't. So it was my first thing in life where I was like, well, what am I going to do? Anyway, that was 16. So from 16 to 26 i worked in so many different full-time jobs i always had a full-time job i just did so many different things i worked in a call center i worked in an office i worked in a shop i never did like bar work or um like hospitality work i did lots of different office jobs i was really lucky um in maybe when i was like 23 i got a, a junior role in marketing and that was actually because of my blog which I started in 2014 because I was going I didn't know what I was doing what was I doing I was like felt like I had no purpose but I was reading these blogs and I thought this is so cool I absolutely love this um I thought you know my CV basically just says office job it was like admin customer service and I thought this isn't hitting the creativity um that I was like getting from the hairdressing and um at school I started like art and textiles. Um, New Year's Day 2014, it was my New Year's resolution to start a blog. So I started laurislittlelocket.com in 2014 and from that um, I used to spend all my weekends shooting outfit posts, writing the posts and scheduling, the, scheduling them in for the week ahead when I was working. Um, and then from that blog I I put that on my CV. Basically, I wanted to use my blog as a portfolio to show that I could do more than what my CV said. Um, and I got this junior role in marketing and it was really opened my eyes to a complete different side of a business that I'd never worked in before that was amazing and that I loved. And it was great. And I felt like I really learned so much in that job. And I'm always really grateful to them for giving me that chance because I had no marketing experience. Oh, take a breath. Why do I speak so quickly? Okay, so then I worked there for about three years and then I did another job for a short period of time. But over those kind of those three years, I worked on my blog every opportunity that I had and built it up. And then um, I remember one day getting an email from a, a, a brand saying like, um, we'll pay you 50 pounds to wear our jumper in a post. And I thought, oh my god like what the hell like i couldn't believe it because at this time back in like 2014 people it was only people like zoella tanya burr these big youtubers who were doing it full time but i still didn't understand i was like how do people do this as a job it was purely a hobby that i started it as anyway it got to um, 2017 and I felt like I was turning down quite a lot of um, events and um, projects and jobs to work on because I had my full-time job and it was really heartbreaking because I'd worked so hard at this and then I was having to say no to these opportunities because I had to go to like my normal job. Um, so I went part-time in my job and carried on um, juggling both still all the time I could on my blog I worked part-time as well which um, was a nice stable income still at the end of 2017 I had enough savings to cover my rent for a few months so I thought okay let's just go for it and I did it and the rest is history so that's how I got into it very long-winded story sorry but basically that is it so I've been doing it full time since the end of 2017 and I started my blog in January 2014. In like six months, Laura's Little Locket is going to be 10 years old. I like to describe it as a bit of a, a magazine, I guess, is that a magazine has its readership and I so luckily have you guys 
and so then brands pay to use our space as like an advertising platform um and where i have so luckily built up an amazing audience over the years um brands pay for that um I also work with affiliates as well. So when I'm sharing outfit details or recommending things, I can use an affiliate link and earn a small percentage of that way as well. So the percentage can range from literally one to maybe 10%, I think it goes up to. My mum helps me with things and I do have a part-time assistant that helps me with things. But other than that, it's me. Uh, so I wear, I feel like I wear a lot of hats. I'm juggling a lot of things. There's a lot that goes on behind the scenes. I am running a business, so I'm paying people's national insurance tax, VAT, um, year end reports, company tax, corporation, uh, corporation company tax. There's a lot going on behind the scenes of, and I juggle Instagram, TikTok, YouTube, creating content for all of the platforms. There's a lot going on. I also have an agent manager as well who handles all of my brand deals, negotiations, contracts, all of that. So it's, it is, there's a lot going on. Another question that somebody asked was, do, do I have a day job? And I don't, this is my job. I feel like I put my heart and soul into this. I, I've prioritized this over everything over the last, like since I've been doing this full time, I've prioritized this over everything. I've put it before my health, relationships, friendships, family, I've put this first. And I don't regret doing that. I feel like I've got more of a balance now. I've really struggled with getting the balance. To run your own business and it to kind of work is amazing but scary because there's that like, what if it goes wrong? Also, if Tom and I have children, we're both running our own businesses we're both relying on ourselves to for income N neither one of us is going to get paternity leave maternity leave so it is amazing but it's just you if i don't work there's no money coming in and that's it so i feel like i work all the time but i love it and i'm not complaining and honestly thank you to you guys from the bottom of my heart for being the kindest most supportive people ever thank you Right, guys, I'm not crying. I thought I'd be crying by now, but I'm not. Um, okay, so, right, that's, we've kind of gone over that. Was there much from your holiday clothes that you didn't wear in the end? Um, there actually wasn't. Um, I felt like I did quite a good job on pre-planning my outfits. I just took seven evening outfits. Um, the day outfits, I just mixed and matched some, I took, I think, four shirts and three pairs of shorts, mixed and matched those. Um, and I didn't actually, no, I feel like I actually wore all, all my clothes. Someone asked, how did you meet Tom? Um, okay, so Tom and I met at a festival, which was so random. Um, but we met at SW4 Festival in Clapham. I see you have a tattoo. Any plans for any more and what tattoos do you currently have? Okay, I've got two and I had them done when I was really young. I had, um... You, you've, I've got this um, dove and heart on my wrist, which meant peace and love. And I think I got that when I was 18. And I don't hate it. Like, it's not... I just wish it wasn't there. And also, <laughs> I've got this on my foot as well. If I came across a tattoo removal person and they were, like, really confident that they could actually get them off, then I would potentially look into it. But I don't hate them that much. I just don't love them at all i think because i don't like the ones i've got i'm not gonna get any more um so yeah maybe it's too personal but would you ever get married sophie sorry if it's rude to ask that's not rude to ask we've spoken about it and i think we would get married one day however it's not a priority right now the cost of weddings is extortionate and we would really like to use our savings to start another business actually which i'll get onto in a minute um and so yeah we both come from very different families my parents are still happily married tom's parents um divorced when he was very young and he never had that family unit i guess or didn't see happy marriage whereas i did so we do have different thoughts on it not a priority right now we've got so many other commitments in our life together i think we will do it one day um and if and when we do it would be quite chilled laid back intimate 
quite small, nothing fancy. Um, Tom wouldn't want like to be the center of attention, doesn't want all eyes on him. So it'd be very casual, relaxed, chilled, like nothing over the top. How do you feel about some influencers copying everything you do? <laughs> uh, well, I think at first it used to like annoy me. It did because as I kind of explained earlier, I put everything into this, my heart and soul and everything into this. And then to see someone else just copy what you do is a bit like, first of all, it's just a bit like, well, can't you just do your own thing? This is what I love about the internet. You have the freedom to express yourself however you want. Um, so when I see that, I do think, come on, have a bit more of like originality. Do you not have a personality that you want to like show? Or do you not have your own thing going on that you want to show? So in that way, I feel a bit like, ugh. But, and when people say, oh, it's a compliment, I get that. But it's still a bit annoying, isn't it? And the thing is that I find most annoying is when people are actually making money or getting good jobs off of copying others, that is what's annoying. But I feel like I have held on to things in the past, but not anymore. I just have to let it go. You can't hold on to those negative things. Gotta let it go. It doesn't, it's not worth my time to worry about that. Uh, I'm conscious of the time. I've been chatting for ages. Let's pick out a few more Okay, so then I'm coming back to that, what are your goals for the next five years, okay? So, um, we would like to have children. Scary as it is, I think, yeah, we would like to have children. We also would love to start a new business together. I've actually never spoken about this on here, and the reason I haven't is because it's one of those things, like, we might not do it. This is just, like, a dream, and I don't know how to get the ball rolling. So if anybody actually has any help that could help with this, I'd really appreciate the help. But basically, Tom is so skilled in what he does. He's an excellent carpenter, but he basically can build houses. <laughs> like, he's really great at what he does. And I think what he's, where he's working at the moment, he's just not... He's almost fulfilling someone else's dream and not his. And I feel like I've built this amazing thing for myself and I want him to have that as well. And I want us to have it together, especially for the future, to buy another property, to renovate and to rent or to sell and kind of have, have a small property business. That's really our dream of what we would both love to do. I love the design of it. So I would do kind of, oh God, I would be stuck with the finances and the design of it and Tom would be, the physical on-site doing it like that really excites us and it's like a really dream for the future over the next couple of years but as i said not sure where to get the ball rolling on that just yet i'm gonna leave it there because i have chatted so much thank you guys so much for sending in those questions i've really really actually enjoyed just chatting to you now i've got the long job of editing this video and i'm gonna um try and make it as short as possible because I feel like I have blabbered on for so long. So yeah, just honestly, the biggest thank you to you guys for just making this all happen. Um, love you from the bottom of my heart. I hope you enjoy the rest of your day and I'll see you really soon. Bye!